Okay, welcome to uh, UFOs and Pseudoscience. Um, this is actually the last lecture I'm giving in the series, and uh, this is gonna be one of the more interesting ones. Uh, so UFOs and Pseudoscience are, are very popular out in the world, things to think about, and uh, we live in a demon-haunted world, as Carl Sagan might say, and so it's easy to believe things that don't have scientific backing, and sometimes it's hard to know what has scientific backing and what does not. I will do my best to give you my slant on this, um, so my name is Robert Nemiroff. I'm a professor of physics at Michigan Technological University. And this class is Extraordinary Concepts in Physics, of which pseudoscience, I guess, could be considered one topic. Um, this is actually the same, very similar to lectures I gave in the astronomy class, though. So this is a one that, uh, there's an online astronomy course that's similar to this uh, that you can find as a very similar lecture to this, although this will be more compact. Uh, you can find these lectures and the astronomy lectures um, online at iTunes or on the web at any number of locations. Um, YouTube has a bunch of them too. Search for my name, go to Starship Asterisk or Physics X and you will find these things. So let's get to uh, pseudoscience. There's one topic, there's one way of scientific, some good scientific theories are what's called falsifiable. It doesn't mean they're false. It just means that they have the possibility of being proven false. So if you come up with something and you, you, there's no possibility that you could, your theory could ever be proven wrong, it's not really useful. Uh, it has to make predictions. For instance, if you can build a house in any number of ways, some of which would fall down and some of which wouldn't, and your theory says they're all equally good, well, that's not a good theory. We need to build houses that don't fall down. So good theories are true but falsifiable. Um, so some crackpot theories might sound good or cool, but if they don't make any testable predictions, predictions unique to that theory, there's no way to tell if they are true. Uh, these, those theories are not falsifiable. So, Sometimes I get email, many people get email if somebody's come up with a new theory of the universe and they want publicity. So the answer to that is, well, make a clear prediction that you can make that no one else can make. And usually you don't hear from them again. They just want you to believe that they're super smart and they've come up with the way of explaining everything. But it's not useful to just do that. You have to come up with predictions, something that makes it useful. So why is pseudoscience popular? Well, part of the reason, I think, is because scientists are portrayed as unpopular authority figures, typically by the media, much in much of the media, not all of the media. Scientists, it turns out, they're generally unelected. They're self-proclaimed to be right a lot, and they're unavailable. Trying to talk to a scientist is difficult. You usually have to be at a university, or you have to know someone. Scientists are portrayed, and I'll get to this in the future, as not like you and me. They're different. They're strange. So strange people who are unelected and self-proclaimed experts who are unavailable are claiming to know everything. But the way you can fight them back is to just say, hey, I think they're wrong. And therefore, you can be cool too. And that, I believe, is one of the roots of pseudoscience. So let's get to one particular brand of pseudoscience called UFOs, unidentified flying objects. As I like to say, uh, there are lots of things that are unidentified that fly and are objects. So the general concept of UFOs is not controversial. What is controversial is claiming that they're intelligent aliens from another planet. So it turns out that that's not easily falsifiable. As uh, Carl Sagan once said, you need to prove this. In order to prove this, you don't, just don't believe you. Believe me, I'm telling you it's true. No, you need extraordinary evidence to back up extraordinary claims. So there are things that look on the sky like they might be UFOs. They are unidentified flying objects, but they are not spaceships uh, with housing aliens from another planet. This is a lenticular cloud, um, and it's got all these different layers on it for reasons you can read uh, on the APOD for April 30th, 2003. Uh, here's another lenticular cloud. I think this one's over Hawaii. Uh, these are caused by uh, updrafts typically over mountains that move and they can look very strange, but they're just bunches of water droplets. So they're not aliens. Uh, here's one that just came recently. Uh, this is called Mothership by some people. Uh, this is a, a thunder su thunderstorm supercell. And there's all kinds of rain and dust going on here, uh, all kinds of clouds going on there, but it's just dust and water, no aliens involved. So many times there are mundane explanations for things that seem supernatural. They might not be popular, but at the end of the day, that's, uh, that's the best explana explanation. So examples of pseudoscience are astrology, ufology, the moon landing hoax. These people show up on TV every now and then. They sound convincing. They have ghosts. 
Creationism is a big one. A lot of play on that. States voting in and out, uh, that one's become political. Uh, intelligent design, the new name for creationism. Ask, why don't most universities teach creationism? So try to take a course. Go to your university and say, I want to take a course on creationism. They won't be offering it. Why is that? Ask yourself. How come the Pope believes in evolution? Ask yourself that. Pope's a big fan. Pope's got an observatory. Big fan of science. Evolution. Uh, face on Mars is another example of uh, pseudoscience. Uh, pictures of Mars, it looks like there's a guy there. What's going on there? Uh, recently, many criticisms of global warming have taken on a pseudoscience uh, flavor. I'll leave it at that. The goal of pseudosciences might not be necessarily to prove that scientists are wrong, uh, but make themselves appear smart. And there's ways that they do that, typical phrases that indicate that you're dealing with pseudoscience. One is that everything is only a theory. And therefore, the pseudoscience says that their theory is just as good as, as yours. It's, it's, there's an equality going on here. I can come up with a theory. I, my theory is that you don't exist. Now, if you have a theory that you exist, should we consider them equally? I don't know. Not everything should be considered equally. So the, the idea that my theory is just as good as yours sounds good, but not, it doesn't always work. Scientists are trying to undermine religion is another one. In my view, religion is about faith, and science is about falsifiability and making predictions that are useful. So I don't know, they don't, they don't necessarily have to collide. Um, religion can help people who are, for instance, mourning the loss of a loved one. Scientists, science can help your car run. Uh, pseudoscientists are good at um, sound bites. They practice these, which is why it's very difficult for someone to debate a pseudoscientist thinking that they're just going to present the facts and they're going to shoot the pseudoscientist out of the water. No, the pseudoscientist many times has practiced sound bites that sound really good without going into details. And if you're not as practiced, you might not sound as good. So many procedure scientists have seemed to have lost the debates with pseudoscientists, but it doesn't make any real difference because there's no, they haven't proven anything. Many times the pseudoscientist will say that the hard data is there, but it will be presented later due to time restrictions sometimes. Uh, pseudoscientists might have a political agenda. So beware. Science is predictable, reproducible. Uh, it makes testable predictions. It creates reproducible results, part of falsifiability. It usually passes peer review. Most science theories uh, uh, are, use Occam's razor, that a scientific theory should be no more complicated than it needs to be. So if you have, for instance, a perpetual motion machine, some kind of pseudoscience machine that has all kinds of unneeded gears and wheels, it's more complicated than it needs to be. If you're going to create energy and sell it back, just make a simple device. Why do you have all these bells and whistles on it? OK, this is uh, the canals on Mars were once a claim of pseudoscience. And this shows you that sometimes there's, there's a basis of fact. I don't think Percival Lowell was trying to deceive people. He really thought they were there. So some pseudoscientists actually know they're wrong, and they're just trying to make money. Some think they're right, and they just they're on the cutting edge of science, and his telescope wasn't really good enough to resolve these canals here. Um, these, these canals here that you see running. Here's what uh, the, um, a modern telescope, I think it's the Hubble Space Telescope shot, shows here. So you see the global features are about right. You see this is here. You see this is here. Uh, you see this is here. But there's no canals. So, uh, you have to be careful. It's difficult to do science right. It takes a lot of time, and it takes checking. This is the face on Mars. So there's all kinds of evidence now that this is, there's no Martians trying to contact us. It's just a hill in the Cydonia region. These are all hills here. And the light just hits it a certain way. So this looks like a nose, and this looks like an eye, and this looks like another eye. And you can get on TV, at least you could have a while ago, by claiming this was a face. And then they would have an expert that says it's a face, and they'd have an expert that says it's not a face, and it would appear to be an equal debate. But it wasn't an equal debate. There's no reason why to, anyone would make a, any Martian would make a huge face, or it doesn't even matter about reason. When they look at this with modern technology, with the spacecraft that are orbiting Mars. They see that there's just a fluke of lighting, and it doesn't look like a face from any other angle. So one of the things I see in debates on TV, particularly about pseudoscience, is that scientists keep reciting facts. And, they, and pseudoscientists, some of them are good at, they're savvy in debating, and they do what's called grabbing the frame, which works on TV. It doesn't work in debate club. Uh, the frame is what is normal. So let's look at what's normal. Your doctor, your medical doctor, your doctor is a scientist. Would you go to a doctor of the occult to, to, to help you get better? Your doctor is a normal person. You send your school, kids to school to learn from scientists. My kid comes home, there's biology books, there's physics books, there's 
different kinds of things. These are all sciences. These are things where hypotheses are given and tested, and reproducibility is important. Uh, my kid doesn't come home with books about ghosts and the occult. They're all fiction if they are. Um, your car is fixed by a mechanic who uses science. Don't take your, your car to someone who fixes your car with the occult, who, who will come up and say some incantations and, and hold up crystals to it. Your car is not going to work. Don't live in a house. Your house was built by engineers using science. Don't live in a house built by the occult, using the occult. It might fall down. No, science is, main, science is used every day all around you. It's important. It's used by regular people. It's used all the time. Science is normal. Oh, it's got small. Don't let crackpots portray science and scientists as being on the fringe. I, this is what happens on TV. The, the person who's saying that they've seen UFOs, they've seen alien spaceship, or they're saying they're like you and me. And, well, I was just out like you are walking down the street. But that strange scientist guy, he's too strange and rigid. Or that woman, she's, she's not telling the truth. She's, uh, she's not like you and me. But science is normal. Everyone is a scientist. Everyone who cooks is a chemist. What's, what's really a cult is the on the, a cult is on the fringe. Occultists are really not like you and me. They're, they're much in the, in the, there's there relatively few of them. Okay? Uh, no major religion endorses creationism. They, no major religion endorses uh, UFOs or almost any pseudoscience that I can think of. No major university, to reiterate, teaches creationism. No major university teaches UFOs or pseudoscience. These are the ways of telling, easy ways of telling things, what's being taught. Uh, so these are mainstream things, religion, mainstream religion, mainstream universities. This is the knowledge that's being passed down the universe, down from, through the generations. It's not on the fringe, it's the normal stuff. Last, let's say you hear some sensational claim that makes the newspaper because it sells papers or some web page. Uh, well, first you should start by being skeptical. Next, I found one thing is Wikipedia is fairer than most. And usually if there's a skeptical response to something, you will almost always, not always, almost always find it on Wikipedia. Now, it's fun to claim Wikipedia is, can be edited by anyone, and it can be, but uh, many times it's edited so many times that the correct point of view or the skeptical point of view is at least portrayed and sometimes dominates what the article. So if you think something's too crazy, if you hear some kind of strange medical thing or some kind of crystals, look it up. Look it up. Find, remember the buzzword. Look it up on Wikipedia. You might be surprised by what you find. There might be, instead of you and, uh, instead of you, someone you know and someone you don't know claiming it's good uh, on television, you might find uh, that it's not, uh, it's not all that popular. And there's people who really have uh, criticisms of whatever it is pseudoscience you're hearing. Uh, again, to, to quote Carl Sagan, extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence. So if someone tells you that they are the planet Neptune, you don't necessarily have to believe them. They have to give you a lot of evidence for that. Uh, last, uh, one of my favorite books, uh, back to Carl Sagan. Uh, he wrote a book, he wrote many good books, but the one that really grabbed me and that uh, gets to the root of this, it seems to me, is The Demon Haunted World, where he, uh, if you read one book on pseudoscience, and uh, you should read that one, it really gets into a lot of the, the different claims, not even specifically, but how to tell different claims and how, um, we live in a world where science needs to dominate and does dominate and is normal. And with that, I will ask you to keep Schrodinger away from your cat. See you next time.